So I always kind of think about the position I want my uh, newsprint page to be in, all right? And then I, uh, because we're drawing, you know, in class, I want to try and utilize at least three quarters of the page. That's the goal. So that is like the number one thing. I want to make sure there's no wrinkles in my board, uh, in the drawing pad. So I always kind of like take my hand and <laughs> do this just to have it, just to make sure everything's kind of clean. If you do have a wrinkly page like this, just turn, turn the page. I think these are all, yeah. I think there's like these little things in there. Anyway. Uh, so we don't want to really compose our drawing first. So the one thing that I say is don't make a don't make a square like that's what I don't want to do. I will do that if I have like a photograph and I can actually see the full composition. But what I want to start doing is actually think about positioning of the objects in space. So I'm going to start with the same thing I did when I was drawing the still life for you guys. I'm going to start with basic lines. And I'm using a color pencil just so you can kind of see my steps. Uh, and I'm also going to draw really, really lightly. I put my my fingers on the page to kind of use that to utilize how I'm going to control my pencil back and forth, right? And I kind of like am doing this the whole time, right? It's very hard to see because I'm doing it very, very minutely, but I'm doing this if I want to like make like a really, really thin line, right? Or I'm laying my pencil down if I want to make like a really, really thick line. But what's happening is I'm kind of like moving it like this. And a lot of people are drawing like this when they first start to draw, which is because that's how we're taught. But really, I like to think about it like I'm actually eating, right? Like with a spoon, like almost eating cereal type of thing. That's kind of how I hold my pencil. Do you have to do it? No, especially if it's not comfortable for you, but it is a good way to start. We always talk about the center of an object when we're drawing. So I'm going to hold my pencil up right, right to the skull, which is like right in front of me. Whee! Right. And just kind of find the center of that skull. And then I'm going to move it down back to my page and I'm going to draw a line right down the center of the skull. Now this isn't only a positional line, it's also a line of length. It's going to tell me like how big do I want the drawing to be. So I want the top of the skull to be here. I want the bottom of the skull to be somewhere there. And I don't want my drawing to get bigger than that. The horns are going to come out of that position, right? So there's going to be a horn that goes this way and there's going to be a horn that comes out this way. So this is going to tell me direction of my form. Right? It's also going to tell me how long or short that form is. Can you close the door for me, Amy? Thank you. All right. Next line I want to do is that line of position on the, um, on the bottle. Right? I know it's going to be straight up and down. I want to kind of think about how far it is going to be from that bottle. So I'm going to just draw like a really basic line. So I almost think about my early stages as like abstract drawing. I'm going to make a box that comes down the back of the skull. All right, I'm going to come through the side of the skull. I'm going to come down. The front of the skull and then I'm going to draw right through the top. I'm going to do the exact same thing on the other side. I'm going to try and find the angle from that back corner of the skull all the way through the eye socket. I'm going to come through the eye socket and then into the front of the skull. And what I want to really do is identify those, those lines or those edges without in my head thinking this is what a skull should look like. I'm really allowing the lines to kind of follow the shapes that I see are happening within the context of what I'm actually looking at. And you'll notice like I'm staying within that initial line that I drew of the skull. All right? Really, really important. Right. I'm kind of like, these are the rules that I set up. I want to make sure I keep those rules intact kind of thing. Okay. Once I have those big shapes in play, you're going to see, like, I'm going to start to break down those big shapes into smaller shapes. Okay. So what am I doing here? What does this remind you of? First day of class, what did we do? Yeah, that's all I'm doing is I'm looking at the positive space. And I'm looking at the negative space and I'm comparing those two relationships. Okay. I'm going to draw right through my center one more time. All right. And I'm going to say, okay, well that looks okay to me. And then I'm going to start to like build out my shape. Okay. Okay. And then the horn comes out like this. The horn goes out and it's going to stop like right here. Abstract 
Always, right? We always want to think in terms of the biggest abstract shapes first, and then we we'll focus on our details, okay? So you're always going to see me work from the outside of a shape to the inside of a shape. Even if I'm drawing the figure or if I'm doing like a really complex painting, I'm always working on the big shapes first. Most of the time you don't see a painting, a painter like start with like an eyeball, right? And then like paint out the full face. They're usually starting with the full shape, okay? That's kind of like the best way and most comprehensive way for like a young artist to kind of learn. Right. So there's the other horn, it's going to come out like this. It's really foreshortened, so it kind of turns. And then the bottle, I want to make sure it's in the same the right spot. So it's going to move over just a little bit. And I want to line up the base of my bottle with where it kind of connects. All right. With a bottle, when I talk about those basic shapes, it's a little easier because the outside shape of a bottle is mostly the shape that you're dealing with. You're going to see if I'm drawing a straight line, I don't want to hold my pencil like this, right? Well, you could. Uh, I want to always just move my whole arm down. That's how I'm going to make like a straighter line. And I don't want to just use my wrist, right? Bottle is going to stop right here. All right, there's the top of my bottle. And you can see what am I doing? I'm combining a series of simple shapes. Okay, I have my cylinder. I just kind of just drew a cone on top of that form. And now I have just something like start my bottle out. And then I can come in and when I start picking up my black pencil, I'll start to break down that bottle shape and to get more and more specific and to kind of figure out the exact angle of that curve. Okay, so now I have my two relationships set up. If I really wanted to, I could put the little box that's kind of holding the skull up right here, right, right in the back, just so I can think about spatial relationships. All right, and then we have cast shadows. So I'm gonna throw those in just so I know where they are. The edge of the box is coming up like this. My cast shadow is going to be like right here. There's a little shadow behind the bottle and then there's the cast shadow from the horn. Okay, so this is kind of like the starting point. This is where I want everything to begin. It's just a personal joke. All right, I'm going to use my uh, hardest pencil first. Why do I want to use my hardest pencil first? Anybody know? Lighter. Yeah, lighter. Exactly. I always want to start from light to dark. So I'm going to pick like three big pencils or three uh, varying pencils. So. My Wolf's Carbon is my light one. That's the one I'm gonna draw with. This is gonna be my shadow shapes, right? This is gonna be like my mid-tones. So I'm gonna use these three. Uh, if you're worried about the names, this is a Pit Pastel, Fabric Castel. Um, this is a Ritmo pencil. These are none of the pencils that were, oh, this is a Primo pencil. None of the pencils that were on your list, except for this one this is a Wolf's Carbon pencil. So these are equivalent to, uh, this one is equivalent to the Pierre Noir number two, or two B. All right, and this one is equivalent to like a B, okay? But I just like the way they feel. And I'm trying out new pencils just to kind of have fun. So if you really want, what you can do is set up like a value scale. Like this is my light Wolf's Carbon, right? That's gonna be like just regular pressure. This is my bold, right? And then this one should be darker than all of them with very little effort, and that's gonna be my 2B, okay? All right, so if you're new to drawing, it's good practice just to kind of like get your value relationships in. You can see how dark this is like a 4B, all right? This pencil's gonna be, if I need it, I can always pick it up, okay? So different pencils, different values, right? Everyone understands? Yeah, you're good? Okay. Not all pencils are, are made equally whatsoever, okay? So I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna start building perspective, which means I'm gonna draw from the inside of that form out. And I wanna like first start with my central shape, all right? And just kinda of like draw that line through and I'm going to build like the mouth of my longhorn. Or the cow. It's really not a cow, it's a bull. 
Why is it a bull? Anyone know? Anybody? He's, um, yeah, he's got horns. He's a male. All right. So I'm going to start really, really, what I call simple, which isn't always simple for other people, I know, uh, and just kind of draw the front of the bull's mouth. And what this does is it gives me a perspective line, right? It tells me that this is the box and that's where it's coming out. And now I can kind of see where it's opening. I'm going to come into here. Right, and I'm going to start to cut out my shapes. So I'm taking really, really simple shapes, and then what am I going to start doing with them? What's the opposite of simple? Complex. Yep, I'm going to make them more complex. So we don't start really complicated, right? You always want to start with really simple shapes first, and then we're going to build those simple shapes into more complex shapes. And that's how you're going to build a more effective drawing technique as well. So two rules, right? First one is I want to draw big to what? Small. Small. Other thing I want to draw is simple complex. to complex, right? And I will tell you simple shapes are usually big shapes, right? Complex shapes are usually small, smaller shapes. So those two things kind of run hand in hand, right? This center line is a little bit off, so I'm going to fix it. And there's the back. And I'm not going to worry about like making my drawing perfect, right? I'm going to, I know I'm going to build that step by step into it. I'm going to kind of like find where that level is. So we also want to draw through shapes like equilaterally. So if I know that my eye socket's going to be like somewhere over here, I also want to draw a line that kind of connects that eye socket to the other side, okay? So I want to find where that eye socket's going to be. This is a really odd angle for that skull because it's like peeking right at me at three quarter, but it's also inside you. That line should be a lot higher. Okay. Did it just break? Yeah. Oh no. <laughs> I've had that happen way too many times. Okay. So I'm gonna double check the distance between these two. And if I look at it, it looks like there's my line, there's my center line. The orbit of the eye needs to be like right here. So I'm going to move it over quite a bit. And I'm just gonna make that circle. just where it kind of needs to be. And I'll worry about all the anatomical shapes of the circle later. I'm picking the skull to have you guys draw because it is a complicated object. And you're gonna to have to start thinking about perspective and shape relationships and all sorts of things. One of the things that I do, uh, which I would also recommend, uh, but it's totally up to you what you feel comfortable with, is I draw with a lot of lines, right? I don't draw with a lot of curves. Why are the lines, do you th why do you think I use lines versus curves at these, this early stage? Some of you know because you heard me talk about this before, but why do you think I start with lines and then I build curves out of those lines? Anybody? What do lines allow me to do? Lines allow measurement, right? A little bit more clearly because they're straight. They allow me to see spatial relationships because they're straight. A curve, right, doesn't have like a clear start or stop. So if I'm drawing a curve, I'm not really kind of like confining myself to like perspective accurately. So I like to draw lines just as a way to kind of like balance out where all my forms go. Okay. 
you can see there's my lines and then the curves are in between. All right, eye socket. I'm gonna lay out this whole drawing as a line drawing first. I'm not gonna do the whole thing in value because I do wanna give you guys time to draw and that would take me like two and a half hours. And if we need to like extend this out into next week, we definitely can. Nobody uses the classroom except for me, so the beauty of this is, is I don't have to move the still life part at all. We can just kind of leave it where it is. And then you guys just have to like remember where you're sitting. Okay, bless you. Okay, why would I use the side of my pencil? What am I trying to identify? Remember what I said? Side of my pencil, soft edge, all right? Top of my pencil, hard edge. So if I'm trying to separate between those two, I will start to like divide those ways of seeing. Okay. Okay, and I'll bring the horn around. Boop. And the horn has like a little interior to it. And you can see how I'm really specifically drawing the edge of that horn. I drew it one, two, three times, right? So I'm not ever letting anything exist as the first time drawing. And the other thing that I want to point out is that I'm not using an eraser too much at this stage. Why am I not using an eraser? You guys, it's because I'm amazing. Why am I not using an eraser? <laughs> How light is this pencil? Very light, right? So if I make a mistake, I just leave my line there and then I just draw right on top of it, right? So I'm very lazy, right? I don't want to use my eraser too much. And I also like to see the process in my drawing. So this kind of helps me to build those lines out. All right, and then this is my original line. My horn is actually like way down here. You can see I'm going to start with like a straight line. All right, and there's going to be that horn. That horn's foreshortened, so it's going to be, it's going to look visually shorter. And this one, this one's also getting cut because of that bottle, so it looks weird. But yeah. Okay, hard line. I don't want my lines to be too dark at this stage. I'm just using the lines as a way to guide my value relationships. And we will take a break in between all these steps, don't worry. I'm not gonna have you guys just stand there. Don't move, I am walking. Do you not know how amazing this is that you are watching this genius? No, you guys still sleep, no? And there's that skull. I want him to go right through and make sure that they line up one more time. That center line on his skull, a lot of people don't think it's important. I will tell you, it's probably the most important line on the whole drawing. Why is the center line so important? It's that, yeah, measurement. And then it's that wonderful P word, P word that I love so much. It's all the perspective is existing within that center line. So if that center line is drawn wrong, Right, he's gonna feel like he's like tilting or falling. I'm saying he because it is a he. Right. I'm gonna come through. There's that jaw. Right. And then the shadows that are going into his mouth. And I'm just gonna define that crack. A little bit more. Boop. And then it's going to come out and over. It kind of comes right there. Okay. And then the side of his jaw is going to come out. Boop. And you can see how I'm tilting that pencil up as soon as I know that that's the final line that I want to draw. And that's not to say that I can't change any of those lines. It's a charcoal pencil, I can always erase it. I just like to make bold lines, okay? 
All right, so his shadow comes out like this. I'm gonna use a soft edge on all those shadow shapes. It connects to the bottle. And I'm not gonna like draw the bottle like completely done. I'm not worrying about it too much. Draw a straight line. I wanna use my whole arm, bring that down. Draw through the edge of the bottle. Shadow shape's gonna come up. It's in perspective, gets really foreshortened on this side. And then it kind of like flattens out. Okay, so that would be kind of like step two. All right guys, so the next steps for me are basically to start mapping out value systems. Um, so what I wanna do is I wanna think about values in those three different steps. The first one, was hard edges, right? Second one is firm, right? And that third one is soft. So when I'm thinking about a hard edge, right, I'm gonna use the tip of my pencil. If I'm thinking about a firm edge, I'm gonna use just like the edge of my pencil. And if I'm thinking about a soft edge, I'm gonna have like a really bold line, okay? So if I can break things down in those three different categories, it's gonna help me to understand those forms. So I'm gonna use the blue just so you can see what I'm doing. Yeah, I'll stick with the blue. All right, so I have uh, on that core shadow of the Longhorn's horns or the bull's horns, you can see I have a really specific soft edge because it's a rounded object. It's going to come into the skull all right, and it's going to like fall over the eye. And then as soon as it gets into the eye, all this is really hard edge shapes. So I'm gonna keep those lines really specific. And then the rest of all this on the side is all shadow. So I'm gonna skip forward and I'm gonna identify the shadows that are in the eye. And you can see because they're in the eye, they're a little bit more articulated. So I'm gonna use the tip of my pencil. So I'm kind of giving myself like visual cues. I'm saying, okay, this is the shadow but that shadow is a little harder. Right. Then that visual cue comes down the shadow and it goes into the skull. And I had done it while I was drawing. It comes into a soft edge because it's almost like equivalent to the cheek of a human. It's gonna be a much bigger transition in this jaw side of the bull. It goes into the nose, right? It comes into the eye. And in reality, like, I don't draw like this. I would draw both simultaneously when I'm drawing. I don't wait to finish the outline and then draw the shadows. I use the shadows to kind of help me map out a drawing all the time. So I don't really do them in steps, but I want to keep these steps really clear so you guys could see how uh, the two kind of relate to each other. Right. Then I have the shadow shapes that kind of come down that side of the nasal bone. He's got like a little bit of a shadow up here. It's really hard, a little soft shadow up here. Okay, but I want to kind of group all this into white. And remember, I only want to use four values. So I'm going to be using, even if, even if I'm using three values, I'm going to be using like that dark, dark and that light, light. I'm not really worried about, sorry, dark gray and light. I'm not really worried about like the holes in the skull, but if you want to put them in, you can. They're like right around here. They could be a good way to like map out placement, right? Make sure things are in the right area, proportions look right, all those things. So if you want to put them in, you can. And then I'm going to come into the other side of the horn. There's that shadow, and that shadow is going to come up and over, and it's going to kind of group all that into a shadow shape. And then he has a cast shadow, and that cast shadow is going to be really, really hard, and then it gets softer as it comes out and over the horn right there. I missed that one. And that cast shadow is going to be really hard out here. And I always want to draw the surrounding value relationships because those value relationships are going to feed directly into how it frames the rest of the figure, right? So I don't want to think about them separately. There's an interior 
of the bone that kind of comes out. All right, and that shadow shape in the bone is really hard and articulated. So I'm gonna make sure that that's very hard. Okay. And then I drew these shadows already. They're pretty strong shadows. I'm gonna simplify them. I'm not gonna draw like all the edges. So what I'm drawing is lights and breaks in those lights. So there's some light breaks and then there's like shadows around them. Okay, so that's all I need for here. Obviously this is gonna be, what kind of edge am I gonna be seeing on a bottle? Soft, right? So I'm just gonna use the side of my pencil and just kind of like coast down that soft edge. And then come down. You can see how I was keeping my pencil almost flat and I'm drawing in the direction of the form as much as I can. All right, so if I'm breaking down my values, how many pencils was I gonna use? Does anyone remember? One, two, three. Okay, and my third one was gonna be this HB. Okay, so I wanna think about those three pencils. The object is actually pretty light, so if I'm ever hesitant, I can start by like organizing uh, my values and relationship with my pencils, right? That way it kind of like helps me to not go too dark too quick. And I think that's the biggest mistake I see students make is going too dark too quick. So if I want to start with my lightest pencil, I'm going to put all my shadows in with my lightest pencil and you're going to see it's going to go pretty quick. And I like to always draw in the direction of my form. So he's kind of moving in this direction. So all my pencil marks are gonna move in this direction. I don't wanna put any pressure on my pencil. I just wanna group all my shadows. Together. And we talked about this a little bit, but I wanna make sure all my values are even and consistent. So I don't want to go through and like scratch things, right? I'm trying to keep all my marks like really organized. So all this is in shadow. You're going to see if I made my lines coherent and consistent. This is all in shadow. Now I should be able to see my lines through my value relationships, okay? Now the horn is like a light gray, so I'm just gonna kinda like throw in, because it is a different value than the rest of the skull. Okay, and you can see how quickly like those values will just drop into those forms, especially like if I'm taking the time to like map out all my value systems. And if I wanna ever graze values in, I put my my uh, my knuckles down and I just kind of like let my um, pencil just kind of graze over the top of the surface and it will make like a really light value. Lighter pencil, much easier to do, right? It's not going to be as easy to do with a, a darker pencil, okay? So there's that box right here. I'm just going to kind of lay in the lines for that box. So I don't forget that it's there. And then all this is in shadow, and you're going to see, I'm going to move my pencil in a different direction. Because now I want to cover all this space. And I'm going to do my best to like bump up against that bottle without going over the bottle. And if I do, I can just use my eraser. So remember, I'm building all my values simultaneously. Don't want to work on one section at a time because if I do, I get obsessed with that section, right? I'm going to move my pencil in the opposite direction. It's a lot harder to do, but I want to move in the direction of that bottle value. Okay, and then the shadow of that bottle.
Okay. So now I have everything laid out. All right, and that is 85% of the way done. Now all I have to do is start to separate my values out, okay? So what I wanna do is I wanna come in and I'm gonna use my darker pencil. And I will tell you, I jump from white to gray to black. Why do I wanna jump into the black? Anyone know? What's the black gonna do? It's gonna frame my edges. It's gonna make my decisions really clear. And it's gonna show me the differences between those dark darks and those mid grays and those lights. Is it recording? Yes. And if I have any mistakes, it's also gonna show me those mistakes and I can use that to like correct those mistakes. So right now, all these edges for my black shapes are pretty hard edges. So I'm coming in, I'm using the tip of my pencil, and I'm just kind of defining where those hard edges are. Shadows underneath the skull are black. And the shadow shapes are pretty hard edges. So when the end of an object hits that cast shadow, can be a very abrupt start and stop. So I wanna make sure that the tip of my pencil is really defining those lines. And you can see me switching pencils. One is really soft, one's not as soft. So it allows me to like soften up the shadow as it gets farther away. And this edge is gonna get a little bit softer as it gets farther away from the skull. This edge is going to be really, really hard. So I'm just going to like outline everything that needs to be a hard edge. I'm not going to finish the whole drawing, but just to kind of give you guys an idea of what it should look like. And big thing is like pay attention to the direction of my line work, right? I'm trying to keep that line work from interrupting my drawing. If I want to use like a smudge stick or something, I can use it just, I don't want to like overkill, so I don't use it too much, right? Okay, I should be able to manipulate everything with my pencil. That's kind of the key. If you guys can build that hand control, it's going to definitely help your drawing skills. And we'll be working on that the whole semester. And not every class will be a demo because I do want to give you guys time to draw, but I think some days are very pivotal, like today, so I'm taking a little bit longer just to kind of work with you guys. So this is going to be my mid-gray. And you can see it's a soft edge. And you can see I'm using my middle pencil. And then it's a hard edge right here as it kind of comes up and around. Okay, 
right? So these are those like in between values. Okay. And then the cast shadow gets a little bit darker as it goes around the shape. Now I can focus on building those soft edges. And then that cast shadow comes down and it comes over into the bottle. Okay, so just to kind of give you guys a starting point, I do want you guys to draw a little bit. But do you see how I'm pulling out the three different edges out of the drawing? Does that make sense to everyone? Okay. Uh, I can kind of go through and finish the whole thing. Um, I don't want to take too much time. Uh, you're going to notice that as you put in shadows, things are going to have to start getting darker. So I can come in with a pencil and always make it darker, but it's a lot easier to start with a lighter value and to kind of build out those shadow shapes slowly. Uh, if you want to use a blending tool, off to the side, I'm going to show you guys how I made this little doohickey. Uh, and you can kind of use it to soften up some of those shadow shapes. This is like my, my IVC blending tool. Uh, just use with paper towels, okay? And we can begin to kind of like break things apart. Okay, but now we have a hard edge, we have the soft edges, and we have about three values we're dealing with, uh, four values, we're dealing with white, gray, uh, dark gray, and black, okay? Does that make sense to everyone? All right, anybody have any questions about anything? Okay.